the misincorporation of the proline analog as editing to carboxylic acid in the pathogenesis of multiple sclerosis. This is by Edward Rubenstein. He is a professor at Stanford, I believe. Uh, this is a hypothesis paper. In fact, most of this is all hypothetical, but there is good evidence to make these quite compelling hypotheses. So he says here um, that a, the AZE hypothesis posits that myelin basic protein, protein within the, um, within the myelin sheath of a neuron is resembled by AZE and possibly other closely related molecules are misassembled in sites of lesion formation because of the substitution of AZE for one or more of the prolines within the consensual epitopes, meaning these conserved domains of the myelin basic protein. Uh, these include a highly conserved myelin basic protein hexapeptide sequence, PRT, PPPP, and an alpha helix bounded by prolyl residues. So basically what they're saying is that there are a lot of these prolines in the myelin basic protein molecule incorporated into the myelin sheath of a neuron that could be substituted for by AZE. AZE can accumulate and that could lead to misfolding of these proteins. This again is plant toxins at work over long amounts of time. This hypothesis proposes that the domain is structurally, functionally, and antigenically altered by the intrusion of AZE in place of proline, that such misassembly may involve other proteins and adversely affect interactions with neighboring molecules. This report reviews evidence supporting the hypothesis that the ingestion of AZE in the diet in conjunction with genetic susceptibility may predispose or contribute to the pathogenesis of multiple sclerosis. So how crazy, how interesting would it be if many of these vegetable components, like beets, something that is widely considered to be healthy for humans, could actually be potentially be contributing to autoimmunity, in this case, multiple sclerosis in humans. Every other post on Instagram some days is about beets and nitrate derivatives and erections. Well, I've spoken about this before. If you eat animal foods and organs, you're not going to need nitrates from beets to get erections. You should be metabolically healthy. There are plenty of nitric oxide precursors and nitrate derivatives in meat and organs that you can get without eating beets. I think beets are the worst way to get nitrates because of the high oxalate content and potentially because of this non-protein amino acid, AZE. Who knows what's going on here? If we are not asking these questions, then I think we are missing out and many will continue to suffer. If you need more organs in your diet, get them fresh or check us out at Heart and Soil, which is where you can get desiccated organs, heartandsoil.co, but get your organs, people. They will help you thrive. If you would like to read these papers, they are found in the video, which will be on YouTube. Um, further on in this paper, AZE in the biosphere, Fowden discovered that AZE uh, was present more than 50 years ago in lilies, in the seeds of the royal poinciana tree and the root of the sugar beet. He demonstrated its presence in 20 of 90 plants he tested. The non-protein amino acid did not attract attention as an etiologic agent in human disease, presumably because humans do not consume lilies, poinciana seeds, or the roots of sugar beets. In 2006, AZE was reported to be present in garden or red beets, the vegetable that is a constituent of the human diet and a staple food in many regions. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so again, the idea here is non-protein amino acids, BMAA, BOAA, AZE, present in foods, present in cycad flowers, present in uh, beets, present in other foods that could be leading to accumulation L-DOPA present in Macuna purans, which could lead to accumulation of these non-protein amino acids in our body, clouding, excuse me, crowding out the actual protein amino acids that are supposed to be used, leading to misfolding of proteins. That is a scary thought, but those of us who are eating an animal-based diet don't have to worry because we're not getting very many of these non-protein amino acids in the first place, and our diets are protective because they are very high in protein from meat and organs. So again, one of the most compelling things I found in that first paper I showed you was the notion that high protein diets, Brazil, Uruguay, again, this is just an association, are protective against ALS. Perhaps the most famous example of a non-protein amino acid causing issues in humans is cannabinine, a substance found in alfalfa sprouts, which is well-known and well-studied and well-documented to cause a clear lupus-like syndrome in humans. Oh no, imagine that. Alfalfa sprouts I thought were beneficial. I ate these like crazy when I was a vegan. They are sold in the grocery store and they contain cannabinine, a well-known non-protein amino acid that will lead to 
uh, lupus-like syndrome in humans over time, or if you consume massive amounts of alfalfa. Let's dig into that. We can see in this paper, the role of non-protein amino acid L-canavanine in autoimmunity, that there is an association of SLE or a lupus-like syndrome and alfalfa first reported in a volunteer who developed lupus-like autoimmunity while ingesting alfalfa seed for a hypercholesterolemia study. Hmm, does this sound familiar? Yes, it does. Oh, we are so worried about hypercholesterolemia. We are so worried about cholesterol that we will do damn near anything to lower cholesterol. And in some cases, we will eat massive amounts of alfalfa sprouts, which lower cholesterol, but as a side effect may also induce a lupus-like syndrome. This was corroborated by studies in monkeys fed alfalfa sprouts that developed lupus. Rechallenge with L-canavanine relapsed the disease. Uh, L-canavanine is an arginine homologue, meaning that it is going to substitute for arginine on the tRNA, okay? And as we say, it was suspected as a cause. Um, L-canavanine can be charged by arginyl tRNA synthetase to replace L-arginine during protein synthesis, as I showed you earlier. Aberrant cannabinoid proteins have disrupted structure and functions. Induction or exacerbation of SLE by alfalfa tablets reported in a, in a few cases remains controversial. Epidemiological studies on the relationship between alfalfa and FSLE are sparse, but there is a clear mechanism here, and this has been documented many times. Alcanavanine incorporation may be more efficient in the presence of inflammation or other conditions that cause arginine deficiency. What about low protein that everyone is uh, suggesting that we do now? That might lead to hyperincorporation of alcanavanine into um, proteins and lead to worsening of these syndromes. So alfalfa-induced autoimmunity in humans, you can see that reduced serum cholesterol levels, inhibition of cholesterol absorption, the prevention of and regression of uh, atherosclerotic plaques caused by the ingestion of alfalfa seed, meal, saponin, were reported in rats, monkeys, and rabbits based on these favorable effects of alfalfa in animals. A human study to examine the effects of alfalfa was conducted, and someone ate a healthy 59-year-old man, ate 80 to 160 grams of ground alfalfa seeds daily on eight occasions or periods of up to six weeks. Although no symptoms were observed, he developed a moderate splenomegaly, which is enlargement of the spleen, pancytopenia, meaning all of his cell counts were down, a Coombs positive autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Coombs positive anemia means that there are antibodies attached to his red cells, we can, which we can detect with a Coombs test. He developed anti-nuclear antibodies and hypocomplementinemia, meaning that complement was being used as part of this hemolytic process. When alfalfa seed ingestion was discontinued, the spleen size and laboratory abnormalities returned to normal. Okay. This is a good example of a, an acute, a short time window eating that much alfalfa, six weeks leading to this effect. But what about the long-term ingestion of alfalfa? Could that lead to misfolding of proteins? Could that lead to other autoimmunity in humans? How many humans have antinuclear antibodies, have Coombs positive anemia, have pancytopenia, or even just anemia with some hemolysis associated? How many humans have borderline splenomegaly with no clear cause? And no one looks at their diet. No one looks at the potential causes misfolding of proteins, misincorporation of amino acids into proteins, leading to these type of autoimmune syndromes. Nobody looks at this in mainstream medicine. I think we're missing a big thing here, which is why I think it's important to understand the hierarchy of foods. If you eat an animal-based diet, organs, meat, fruit, honey, raw dairy, you will not be getting many of these because you will be eating at the top of quote, the food chain. 